wanted to put together a video on uh, the installation of these mini splits. Now I'm not going to do a video on how to install them. There's plenty of those videos out there already. What I'm what my video is is basically on some of the stuff that wasn't covered at all or wasn't covered very well. At least not the videos I seen. I'm not saying you can't find a, a awesome video out there that covers it everything step by step. I'm just saying the videos that I watched, some of this stuff wasn't covered or wasn't covered very well. So I, I just wanted to add on to some of the other videos out there, some of the stuff I found put putting in uh, these mini splits because I just finished up putting in the third one. So like I say, this isn't a video on how to install it. it it's just touching on some of the stuff that I didn't find out there. So here we go. Here you can see the, the hole. I had to drill through the brick exterior course two and a half inch hole through there and yeah I'm basically gonna run the line down the side of the window and then over to the unit which is gonna be hung right around over there and on the inside you can see I got the bracket mounted and leveled and the hole over there I got to just push the tube through there and yeah uh, if you notice it's offset from the, the center of the window and that's because if you picture a window and that's pretty much where we, we have to put them is above our windows. And the, you have a header that is above your window. So I did not want to drill that two and a half inch hole through the header above my window. So I just basically offset it a little bit. So this way I'm on this side of the, your, your uh, jack and cripple studs or uh, your, your king stud and jack stud over here. And there you have it. It's up there, hung on that bracket, and you can see the, the pipes went through there. Now don't let anybody kid you on some of their review, you know, when they're talking about installing, they just all oh, just slide them pipes, they just slide right through there. Yeah, make sure you have a helper around here to give you a hand, especially on a bigger unit. This one here is a, it's a 9,000 BTU, so it's pretty light, but I still had my wife helping me out because they want to get hung up and everything, so. Yeah, they, they don't slide through there very easy, especially if you get 18,000 BTU or, or more. And my other one's an 18,000 BTU because uh, they use a thicker, thicker lines on their OD lines. And you can see on the outside, they're, they're out there. Now here's where I'm saying if there are separate tubes, it'd be a little bit easier. Can, you can see your the supply line or return line is well, depending if it's an air conditioning or in a heat pump mode, the, your thicker line is shorter up here. So when you hook them up, you're, you're, you can see how they're offset. Well, yeah, I had a struggle because the other ones were, though, they were attached to each other. So it made it a little bit more difficult than that. Now these are capped, and when you take these caps off, you should hear a hiss coming out of here. And don't panic because that's actually just nitrogen. They have this just charged with nitrogen. So when you unscrew these, it's hisses. So that way you know there's no internal leaks inside the unit and you didn't damage these when you pushed them through or whatever. So don't uncap these until you are ready to hook up your lines because you know you can just break a line just bending these or anything like that. So just leave them capped until you're at this point when I'm ready to hook up the lines, then I will uncap them, make sure I hear a hiss in there. Otherwise I know if I don't, I may have a problem. Well, it's the next morning now. You can see I have that mounted. I have all the, the, the railing rail mounted for that. I did the wiring yesterday and all I have left right now is to hook up the, the Freon lines and vacuum those out and get those in there. Now, this this unit is 50 some pounds over here this is a 9000 btu unit now they they rate these brackets at like 300 350 pounds now i have a manger i don't <laughs> i don't know that i'd go much heavier than this i mean maybe up to 80 pounds or something yeah i'm 200 and some pounds and i it, they did support me but 
I would be very leery about using them on anything more than about 80 pounds. But I know they do use them, just not my thing. And I'll, I'll show you the other one in back, my the 18,000 BTU one. That one there, I, I did buy a bracket like this for it. And I, I elected to put it on a, I poured a slab for it. So let me get those lines out here and show you what we got going there. So let me show you with this blue cap that for the inside uh, coil because if somebody didn't mention this to me it would have freaked me out on this. So you can hear that air that's just nitrogen coming out of there because this is the this goes to the inside coil. So yeah if I, only one other uh, person doing an install that I've seen on the video actually mentioned that. And yeah, if I didn't know that, that would have freaked me out on that. So just the heads up on that one. And that's a good sign. That means we didn't break anything. Everything is fine on the inside. Uh, one of the other thing on these flared edge ends is you, you want to use like a gasket uh, sealer and there's special stuff for it. Um, this Pioneer brand actually gives you a little tiny tube of it which is really helpful if you didn't want to but I already bought this. Now the main thing with this is is you just put it on the here let set that down you just want to mainly put it on the flared end. Now when you do that now I also recommend putting it on the back side of the flare because this does act as a lubricant. So when you're tightening it up, the flare to the, the fitting will be lubricated and want to slip. And this will not be up against this nut. So it will want to twist your line. So it's not going to help seal any better. It just actually adds a little bit of lubrication on here. So I just recommend putting it on both sides of that flare. All right, you can see I have them all hooked up, ran down. And yeah, these elbows, be very, very careful bending that tubing around them. That's, it's a little bit tight. I wouldn't want to, you know, have it, see a kink it or anything, especially the thick tubing and that. I know my 18 ton, it actually, like this is a 3 eighths. The thick line is a 3 eighths inch. And uh, the other one was a little bit bigger than that on the 18 a uh, thousand BTU and that one was real hard this one wasn't too bad but I have it all in there and, and yep the drain hose is in there and this is at a slight angle going down I still have to get that drop down I got to wrap it all up I just put that cover on there to hold everything together so come around here and yeah I could I actually have a flaring tool that would flare these so I could have cut them down in that where my flaring tool only goes up to the 3 8 size. It wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to flare the, the one on my 18,000 BTU. So I don't know that this isn't bad. I'd rather have a little bit of extra line in that in case the, the units ever got to get serviced or moved a little bit set on, you know, something over here, there's enough line to move it around a little bit. So I just left them as they were with the factory flares i figured they, them are them are better than any flare i could make and i did tighten these these are tightened up now and don't go crazy on these things either i mean you can start actually twisting these tubes you know they give you a torque rating now, i don't have a torque wrench for that but and i see a lot of people online they're using these big old crescent wrenches uh yeah just Get yourself a wrench set. You know, don't, don't be fumbling around in here with some some big crescent wrenches. Yeah, I don't know. Just just my thing. If if you if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you don't have a wrench set, now then it is what it is, I guess. Now I I've seen some people as they get this far and they like wrap all this stuff up and they put the covers on and that, and then when they're doing their leak check, they go, "Well, I can't check up there because that's all wrapped up." Well, don't wrap all that up <laughs> until you're done with your leak check. You know, this way I can check it out, you know, once it's running and that and do the the leak check up here too, because I mean, that's that's kind of an important thing. You know, if, if you're leaking free on it, it's not gonna run for very long, so. Now, it, we're to the point where to, we, we have to, you know, evac this evac the system. Uh, now this is what 
where most do-it-yourselfers get all panicky because they don't have this and they don't understand it because they never never had to use it before uh, I bought this whole setup on, on Amazon for like it was like 130 bucks and I think it was even cheaper than that because they had a like a clip this coupon thing and plus the adapter for the 410 a Freon that was like another 10 bucks so I mean for under $150 you can have this and it's perfectly capable of doing what we needed it to to do you know they call it evac the system it's n not really that technical it's just you're sucking as much air as you can out of the lines you just installed and your inside coil before you open up your pre-charge on the condenser or compressor i'm sorry so I, that's all you're doing with this i'll get it all hooked up and i'll i'll sh show you what it does uh here this <clears throat> this is about it uh, i just put the board down there because i didn't want to set my lines in the dirt over here uh, basically it's a pump yellow line is a suction line goes up to the manifold and we're going to be watching the blue meter because we're on the low side and that's all we have to worry about on here is the low side we don't mess with the high side except to open it up um, but you can see the gauge is on zero it's hooked on over here Here's that 410A adapter that goes to this. And you want to make sure these are nice and tight. I mean, sometimes you got to get them more than finger tight. I have a pair of, you know, rubber pliers that, so they don't get all marred up. And pretty much, we turn the pump on and you can see the meter is going to go start going down. It goes down pretty quick. And that's about it. We're going to let that sit for about 20 minutes and get that all the way down to negative 30 minimum. But we're still going to let it run for 15, 20 minutes. Just kind of suck out any kind of crap that's inside there. So we'll be back and then we're going to do a leak down check. Yeah, I was going to show you. This is the 18,000 BTU, the one and a half ton that I put in. Uh, you can see it goes up. The, the units mounted above that window. I'll take you in, in a bit, show you that. Have the drain line coming out there. Yeah, I've never seen it drip yet here in Texas. This part of Texas, we don't get a lot of humidity. In that. But you can see I just wrapped up. This one actually came with 25 feet of uh, line set. So I just wrapped it up. I'm still wanna, I wanna build like a little insulated box for that and wrap some insulation on there. Just do what I can to get the most efficiency out of it but you can hear this thing is running right now this thing is quiet it is quiet quiet compared to the other ones and this is the inverter so it'll actually slow down as you get closer to the temperature but here let me I want to show you something because this thing's running right now it's cooling we're I'm, I'm powering actually the two units from my shop so that way eventually when I get more batteries on my solar unit I will be able to take that off grid and basically run those two air conditioner units off the solar and the batteries but i want to show you you've seen it was running i'm going to show you what it's drawn here three and a half amps right now and that's because it's running pretty open this will drop down to about two and a half when it gets closer to temperature and right now it's not running full bore it has a turbo mode and that where it will draw more but this thing is usually when it's running it's usually drawn about three amps now this is a 240 volt so you can see on this side same thing and i mean that's just incredible i have a, a 12,000 btu in my shop a regular wall mount air conditioning unit and that thing draws when it's running it turns on it's drawn five to six amps on both both phases because it's a two, 240 volt so yeah and this is an 18 ton and it's pretty much cooling down our kitchen dining room and front room area the one i'm installing now is for a 20 by 20 foot uh, we just call it our den room but i'll yep, show you in there in a bit okay so you can see it's still running and we're all the way down to 30 negative 30 on here so now what we want to do is we want to isolate this gauge and this hose from the pump. So we close off this valve. 
then we come down here and shut off the pump and you can see it's staying at 30 so now what we're going to do negative 30 i'm sorry now what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit for about 20 minutes to a half hour last one i actually was busy doing other things and i sat for an hour or so and that never hurts so we'll be back in half hour yeah here's that uh that that sealant pioneer gives you uh you know not not a big deal but for somebody who's just going to put in one of these units i'm put i plan on putting in a total of three uh before winter this year uh and adding a fourth possibly next spring or the following spring it's not that big of a deal on the fourth one but for somebody who's just put in one of these and don't want to spend 10 bucks on uh you know a thing of that sealant i pioneer includes it i think that's that's an awesome thing for somebody who's just doing one and he also give you the allen wrench to open up your uh, freon valves which big deal i have uh allen wrenches i had to get my own on the other unit this these things weren't included with the ductless air system but um you know just another nice touch that they have it you don't got to go get get your sit right wrench set okay so it's been about uh a little over a half hour now and we can still we see we're down to still negative 30 on there and it is inches of mercury in that on there so um <clears throat> if i said psi early I'm, I'm sorry it's it's inches of mercury on there now so that means these lines and the inside unit are under a vacuum now here's the other place i've seen a couple of the where they were showing you on youtube to install these where they did it differently then at least the manuals I have suggest. Now the manual I have suggests this is this is what they call the low side. That's where we drew the vacuum in our hookup, and this is the high side. The high side is your small line. Now the manual tells you to crack this open a quarter of a turn for five seconds. That should be enough to charge this line a, a, just a little bit and then close it off. And that should start reading pressure of course and we let it sit just spray do a little bubble check and once we're we're confident that there's no leaks we pull this off close everything up what i've seen people doing is they just come over here and they just open these things up and they you know they leave everything hooked up and then they you know well the problem with that you open up this one first i said you know n number one your vacuum is drawn on this line here your big line you open up your uh, the Freon on the opposite side on the high pressure rather than the low pressure if you open up this one you're still gonna even though you're under vacuum you still have air inside this line now what that's going to do by opening up your high pressure side first is that's going to push the Freon and it's going to push out some more air into this blue line into your manifold setup over here it's actually going to help evac more air on there than it would just if you opened up this your freons going this way and and that way at the same time so we're going to open this up a quarter of a turn for five seconds and we should hear some freon and that should go positive four or five we close it off and you can see we're at about yeah, about 55 60, yeah, 60 we'll call it a 60 psi now and yes and now oh out bar i'm sorry uh so we're gonna let that's it i'm gonna go get I, my soapy water and i'm gonna spray a couple of these fittings down and if we're all good we're going to unhook this vacuum pump and charge up the whole system okay so i sprayed it with some soapy water didn't see any bubbles so now what i'm going to do and this is another part where i that people do <laughs> as far in my opinion they're doing it wrong is they open up these and they leave this set up well the problem with that is is this is kind of like this you know it's kind of like your your car tire so as you're taking this off it's pushing Freon out and uh, whoop, sorry about that almost dropped you uh, it's pushing Freon out so if th these are opened 
it's just, it's just going to push free on out as you're doing it. Now it's only going to be bleeding out, you know, hopefully it don't all of a sudden stop turning on you and all of a sudden all your freons just gone. So the way I read it is this is this valve is closed, this valve is closed. Now you take this off and it's going to start bleeding out. Now fortunately I can't record that because I can't hold the camera and do that at the same time. So what these are closed. Now I'm going to take this off here. So it's going to leak out a little bit of Freon, but we're only at, you know, 50, 60 on there rather than the full charge because there's still a lot more charge inside this unit. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and open these up. Okay, so pull that out. Like I say, it's just like a car tire. She was hissing as I was pulling it out. But it's just basically pushing out whatever little bit of air is left in there. You're not losing all your Freon. And there can be air in there. It's not going to hurt it, hurt it. So now we open these valves up all the way. And yes, you do open these up until they stop. Do not force them. Once they're open and they stop, they're stopped. You know, just like that. You don't, that, that, that's it. Don't, don't crank it because it could pop out of there on you. So now the system's all charged up. Going to put these caps back on and get the power going and see if we can fire this up. All right, got it cleaned up. I did another bubble bubble check on it. Yeah, everything so far is fine. Let's put the power, the disconnect back on. And don't be surprised if the first time you charge something up. No, well, I shouldn't say charge, but that's kind of what it's doing. It's going to, you know, this has uh, start run capacitors in there. So when you put it in, you may hear a little crackle or something like that when you push this in. Don't freak out unless it's like a big arc or something. You don't want that. Let's see, get a better angle on that. There we are. I say, don't freak out if you hear that. It's just charging up the capacitors in there. All right, let's power up the inside unit. And let me figure out this remote control here. All right, got the remote figured out. Well, almost. I still got to figure out the fan mode on it. But you can see it's 77, set at 77. Long cold air. And let's go outside to the outside unit. And yes, that's on, by the way. It, it is running. I know these things are just quiet, at least compared to the unit we have. The whole house unit we just call it the beast it's a five ton and you can see we're running out here fans going and yeah this is running i i did another leak check that's all good i still got to finish you know tying all that up and i will get that all done i did a leak check up there because i waited to to do that just be patient and wait to do that and then once everything's running and you checked at least you're confident and you know that that's not leaking up there all right now you can see now i got, got them all wrapped up insulation on there so yeah now i can get the finish cutting them tie wraps down there and, and get the rest of the covers put on over here on this side yeah i want to show you something here now both units are running the one the oh, i keep wanting to say one and a half down i'll just say the 18,000 btu and the 9,000 btu are running so that's two and a quarter tons of air conditioning that are running right now and yes they're both on these this 20 amp breaker right now both units running in cool mode are drawn 3.8 amps on both phases that is amazing right now and so I have everything now I still want to get a unit in our bedroom and that but I wanted to do some trials and stuff on there and decide which one I want to get for the bedroom now I shut that uh, 
the 18,000 BTU and off just to see what the normal current draw on this 9,000 is. And oh my gosh, we are at 1.5, 1.7 amp draw on it. And again, that's that that is the 240 volt. So I mean, that is amazing to me. Now granted, it's basically idling because it's close to the temperature. And, you know, if, if you're way far away, it'll go into, a, you know, a turbo mode. And I will get those readings, too, as far as what it draws at its maximum. Yeah, I can't remember if I mentioned it before, but, you know, these, these can, and the ductless air could, too. You can either uh, t take your, your, your Freon lines, and they can either go out the right or the left side. Now, I've been doing... My, my installs with them all on the right side and when I say the right side right right now this is on my left side but when you're looking at the front of the unit it's on the right side just because these tubes bend out and it, it they pretty easy straight out and then once they're out you put them through the hole in the wall now if you went out the left side and we're going out the the hole in the wall Oh man, that that I don't know. That'd be really a tight bend with these fittings on here. You'd almost have to uh, reflare these, probably cut cut them back to here, and put the fittings back here. So when you come over here, you're on the copper tubing. Otherwise, you're going to be putting so much strain on that that fitting that that would not be good. I, I would not advise taking these out the the left side unless you went out the side side because these are also made to go out the side. You know, I'm talking about the left back side of the unit. I, I wouldn't advise that myself. And the other thing I wanted to mention too, because I did it on the first unit I, I was working on, because you get it, you get excited, you're wondering how easy, you know, the, the copper tubing is to bend out, because you got to put it at, you know, a 90 degree angle to the unit. I did that, but the thing to do before before you bend these out is get your wiring all done because you actually have to flip the unit back on its back so it just makes it a lot easier to do the wiring before you, you, you bend these out as mentioned on uh that that unit they gave uh you know the the sealer for your flare fittings you know pioneer actually supplied some i already had bought you know a, a thing of the the nylock blue sealer so I, I already had bought this i didn't know they supplied this the the other one uh the duckless air did not this one here came with uh a seal safe kit uh which is actually really cool because not only do they include the the seal and nylock but they give you the the flare seals for them i've seen these on amazon i have never used them before but they are actually pretty expensive on amazon i, I forget what they were going for plus they still give you another tube of that but I've, I've seen good reviews on these uh i was just really impressed that pioneer does supply them in there and like i say pioneer so far they seem more of a more based towards your your diy uh people so good job well there you have it there's number three up and running and it's actually cool cold out today i had the fireplace going earlier than that winter came early here in texas so we'll deal with it but that's all in have the, the i did the the leak check and everything and one, one of the things i forgot to mention in uh previous uh part of it was when you do your leak check if you, it's also a heat pump check it in heat pump mode because your pressures are higher in heat pump mode so you, you know if they're, they're, you don't have any leaks and when it's running in heat pump you won't have any leaks when it's running in air conditioner mode but there's number three it's back on a slab and I'll explain that in a bit this is at 9000 uh, BTU I say that one's on a slab this one is is on the hangers and yeah i'll explain that i i went back to the the slab rather than the hangers and you can see this thing's just putting along it's actually uh, right now if i went in there and checked it it's drawing like an amp and a half on 220. and there's the inside of the 
This is the bedroom one. This is the third unit that I just just put in, finished going, get, got it going today. So why didn't I want to use them brackets on the, the 12,000 BTU unit like I did on the 9,000? I guess I was comparing the my 18,000 uh, BTU unit. That one there was almost 100 pounds. And when I started looking at the brackets, I was just like, yeah, I, I want to... I, I think I want it on a, a slab and uh, so I, I put that on a slab plus I wanted to kind of compare because I always thought it's just like man this thing is mounted to your house and I know they're quiet but can you hear this thing run because you're structurally mounting into your, a motor to your house it's kind of like mounting you know just like a fan to the outside wall it's just you you think you would hear it but I, I didn't know so the 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 one I I the nine thousand BTU that one there I thought well if it, if it makes a little bit of noise it's not that big of a deal because it's just in the den well yeah I I can hear it run you know it's it's kind of it's not loud I I do have sensitive hearing you know I I I'm able to hear like really low noises and stuff when I worked in the factory and that and they'd sent me for hearing tests I always had exceptional hearing but yeah i i can hear it. it to me it's just like this low rumble in that when it kicks in it's kind of like there's a uh a car just a normal car not a loud car just a normal everyday car sitting outside your house idling you know where it's not loud if you had a tv playing you wouldn't hear it but in the dead of the night and that you definitely would hear it i i can hear this one you know at, at night when we don't have the tv on and, and anything and i'm actually in the kitchen and I hear it kick in and I can actually hear it and it's because it's mounted to the house Now I got it mounted on brick. Maybe if it's mounted on wood, it'd be a little bit better or something But I did not want that in our bedroom. <laughs> I don't want it in the middle of the night I don't want to hear this thing like some cars idle idling outside my my bedroom So that that's why I elected to do the slab on, on the bedroom unit the uh, the bracket was would be definitely robust enough to to hold that one up but that that's why i went with the slab on that one well i hope that was helpful and like i say it was just some of the stuff that i noticed wasn't covered very good or they they just didn't flat out tell you that so i hope hope this helps somebody out there again Please leave in the comments what you think. If it was helpful, if I missed something, add, add to it. You know, some, something that you found that I didn't cover or the other videos didn't cover either. By all means, add it down into the comments. Again, thanks for watching. This is Casey. Talk to you soon.